Hello everyone, welcome to Scorpion Venom Studio Games. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe for new videos regarding Unreal Engine and all its products and how to create a video game from home. I'm going to go ahead and continue with physical water surface material that I have created and I'm going to continue with querying the wave height from Blueprint. This is where we left off. And I'm just going to read through some of the stuff. Some of the stuff is going to get Im added to the game. Some of the stuff I will have to skip. Uh, some of the stuff is not important at the moment to be added to the game. But I would like to finish reading through some of the stuff here and uh, see what else is in this project. It says, querying the wave height from the blueprint. If you turn to the right in the demo map, you will discover three small blueprints floating in the water. Those are examples. The, those are example blueprints that show you how to query the height and speed of the water surface. We have the water location blueprint shows how to query the location of point on the water surface given the coordinates x and y of the initial position. Just call the function calculate delta only. Let's see if we can actually open this up. And it says it's currently disabled. So let's go ahead and maybe open link in a new tab. No, it's still not look, letting me do that. Okay. Well, it says calculate delta only of the water setting blueprint with X and Y as input, and the 3D delta vector with the shift is returned. If you also need the normal vector calculated, call the function calculate delta normal instead. The water height blueprint calculates the wave height at the fixed point X and Y. In this case, it is necessary to store the delta value from the last tick in the variable. The water speed blueprint calculates the vertical speed of the water surface at a point x and y and displays an error proportional to the speed and this is the stuff that i've actually added to the game the water location water height and water speed and that was added right here we have water speed water location and water height and what also what i'm going to do is create a new folder and we're going to call it water settings And I'm going to actually add all these into the folder so that it's a little more nice and organized. Uh, going to get this character. I don't know if you remember, I've added a uh, get in player character. Uh, as of right now, I don't need no characters in the game. Uh, going to delete that so that it's a little bit nice and clean. Uh, we're going to keep the landscape separate for now or maybe even create a folder for it as well. We're going to call it landscape. And we're going to put these uh, landscape and a gizmo in the folder as well. So now we have folders dedicated for all the items that's in that are in the world outlet, but outliner. But at least it's a little bit cleaned up. And what we're also going to do later, once we're done with this project on the water surface, we're going to reorganize all these folders and make it a little bit nice and clean because I like to keep everything nice and organized and easy accessible and I'll show you how to use some of these filters to quickly access some of these materials without going through all the folders. That being said, we're going to continue with the document. It says hiding water inside of a boat and this is something that I've mentioned in the previous video that I would like to make sure that it is actually set in the game since we are going to be using the boats in the game. Now this blueprint that I've set up in the buoyancy that I've added to the actual material or in this scenario this boat not a material but a mesh we're gonna make sure that we add this to a lot of other items that are gonna be floating in the game so this is the only reason I'm currently working on this project to make sure that a lot of items can float on the ocean later down the road I'm gonna go back and make sure that uh, it ends on the shore of the island and we also gonna touch some other uh, sand locations and surfaces beyond the shore so down deeper into the ocean since it's all flat we're gonna change that as well so that way it's a little bit more natural that being said let's go ahead and read the hiding water inside of a boat it says if no s special measures are taken water will also appear inside of a boat the water material of physical water surface is set to blend mode mask and is already prepared in such a way that water can be easily masked inside of a floating object. This method makes use of a mesh distance field. Specifically, we use the 
fact that the distance to nearest surface material node returns a negative distance inside of a mesh. The water material detects this and makes the water accordingly. To see this effect in action, have a look at the map mass water that comes with the physical water surface. It says, after enabling mesh distance field, you should see that the water inside the boat disappears. The image on the left shows how the effect looks like. And I believe it's right here. I'm going to go go ahead and find the mask water. And like I've shown before, all you have to do is really is just copy any of these highlighted, bolded words. And you can paste that into your project if you have this project. So masked water, this is the actual blueprint. Actually, let me go ahead and quickly save this world since I've changed a couple things here. I, I simply just moved the actual water and then created a couple folders here. So once the island is saved, we're going to open the new uh, the new level. I was going to say the new island. But this one right here is called Mask Water, which is going to demonstrate how the water is not in the boat. So we're going to go ahead and quickly load this up. It shouldn't take that long. Here we go. So this is one of the projects. Oh my goodness, I'm looking at this ocean makes me actually feel sick just because of how crazy the water moves. And if we uh, come across here, it says to, to mask out the water inside the boat, you need to enable the following settings. If I could only read through the cubes. Let's go ahead and move these cubes out of the way. And I'm holding shift to select multiple uh, cubes. Let's go ahead and move it out of the way. It says project settings. Then it says rendering settings or a rendering section, lighting category, generate mesh distance field. And I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So file. We have, or does it say project settings, right? Edit project settings. And once it loads up, now instead of going through entire settings here where it says a lighting category which is right here on the left you can definitely find that but instead of doing that and going to general and you know trying to find all this you just type in generate mesh distance field so let's go ahead generate mesh distance field so right here i'm going to go ahead and enable this it says whether to build distance field of static mesh needed to, for distance field AO, which is used to implement movable skylight shadows and ray trace distance field shadows on directional lights. Enable will increase mesh build time and memory usage. Changing this uh, setting requires restarting the editor. So we're going to go ahead and enable this, and it's going to ask us to restart the level and the engine. So we're going to go ahead and restart now. We're also going to go save selected. And as it's happening, I'm going to wait for it to load up. It says here's a step by step guide how to make, uh, how to mask out a water inside of a boat. Enable generate mesh distance field, which we just did, in the project settings, then restart the editor. You need to create another mesh that has the same size as the boat, but that is not, not hollow. This mesh will be used to generate the mesh distance field. The image below shows the exact uh, the, the example mesh that comes with the physical water surface. The boat on the left is not hollow. All water inside this mesh will be masked. This mesh on the right is the one that will be visible. So what we'll have to do is create a mesh the size of our boat and we'll have to mask it somehow. In the details panel of the original boat mesh, choose the boat mesh that is not hollow as distance field replacement mesh. The image below shows us uh, the setup. So we have simple boat and simple boat two and hollow. So I'm assuming the boat two is not a hollow boat. And let's see if this actually finished building. Uh, okay, so we can go ahead and close the project settings. Also, we're going to go ahead and reopen our level. So we scroll back up. We have mass water. I just want to reopen the level. And we have two of them open. Going to type that in. Open the level real quick. Now, as I open up the level, it's now we have a dark screen here. 
Now, if you want to see some of the other action going on here, instead of lit, we're going to do unlit. So you can get a view of this boat, which is demonstrated in here on this image. So it says, make sure that that yeah, um, make sure that the effect distance field. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I just sneezed on my screen. <laughs> Excuse me. It says, <laughs> make, make sure that the effect distance field lighting is enabled on the boat. You can disable the option on all other static mesh to improve flat uh, performance. Use the show visualize mesh distance field option in the viewport to check that the boat does not appear to be hollow. So in order to do that, here's your viewport, and it says under the show, we scroll down under visualize, and we want to make sure that mesh distance field is enabled. I've already uh, enabled that. After that, we're going to go ahead and continue reading this. It says, after completing those steps, the water inside of the boat will be masked out automatically by the water material. And in some cases, it is possible that some water is still visible inside the boat, especially if the hull of the boat is very thin. This happens when the resolution of the global distance field is not fine enough to capture the hull of the ship accurately. If you have this problem, you can try use the console command right here. It's r.aog uh, AO global df resolution to increase the global distance field resolution and then you can click on this link below and it'll take you to another link. But that being said, what we're going to do is find a distance field replacement mesh right here under the details of the boat. And it should be right here. We have simple boat selected, details, and simple boat. And right here, we're going to type in Distance field replacement. And I don't see it here listed anywhere. And if I were to compare it to the documents, it for some reason does not have a distance field replacement function mesh available on here. Because if we look at it, on this screen, I'm not sure if it's just a lot older version or not, but for uh, right above where it says LED settings for where the details are, uh, it gives you that. But if we're at the level, it actually should work. So if we press play, now if we look at the boat, it is completely uh, hollow and it has no water in it. So it's pretty cool. And something like this we can use for uh, a lot of different uh, purposes, well, especially the boats that we're going to include in the game. So, that being said, I hope it's not going to screw up my view on uh, the world, which is under here, which is lit and lit, um, because now I can't see anything really. And of course, in order for me to turn that back off, we'll have to. change the settings so under edit project settings and we'll have to disable so if i were to go back to generate mesh distance field under engine rendering and disable that i'm going to restart it and see if it will change the screen back to normal where you can see in the viewport and as it opens up my level Go back to uh, masked water. Now we can see the level again. Now this is something that I'll have to uh, think about if I want to use that in the game uh, right away because I can't really see the viewport. And uh, if we look back again, we have water again rendering in the game. For the build purposes, 
again, uh, this is something like this I'll have to uh, look into later because as of right now it's not important to actually have no water in a boat or even have boats in the game. This is not a priority, but I'm just doing more of an overview on this project and how you can actually use this and follow. Look like we have somebody. Um... Hello, you never go. Oh, it's uh, my Discord. Somebody's on there regarding uh, one of the projects. But yeah, I mean, like I've said before, uh, not a priority. So we'll have to focus on this a little bit later. But quick demonstration on how to turn the water off in the boat so it doesn't render in side of the mesh materials and things like that so you can use it for any purposes that you would like and then hopefully in the next video i will show you the new projects that i'm currently buying and one of them is going to be water related so we're going to have a new water material that's going to be translucent like i've wanted before and maybe even possibility that i will replace some of this ocean in general because it does come with uh, grass and waves as well and things like that. I actually like how it's set up. It's kind of more calm of the ocean, even though it seems like you get almost get sick from it. But I think after looking for it for a while, I'm getting used to it. So that being said, here's a quick demonstration. Uh, the only downside is turning on and turning off this preset. But that being said, it doesn't mean that I can't use that in the future for when the game is actually being built. So we'll be able to turn it on and turn it off in the future. Uh, what I would suggest doing to anyone who's developing a game or who's using this setting, I would personally go ahead and copy uh, this part right here. It says enable generate mesh distance field in the project settings, then uh, restart the editor. Uh, so these steps will be necessary to be done when you're building a game. So let's say if I were to be done with the game and I want to release a pre-alpha stage of the game while I'm using the viewport. I can actually do that uh, as a last step. Now, if you guys know a better way of doing it and actually keeping that enabled and still see the screen, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Again, I'm learning engine and as of right now, I'm not 100% familiar with all the functions and capabilities of the engine itself. So if there's a different way of doing this, please let me know. Um, all the comments and suggestions are appreciated. So that being said, let's go ahead and uh, move on to a couple other things that I've mentioned before, which is um, organizing of some of the stuff. But in order for us to do that, I would like to go over some of the plugins that I have. And I think I would what I'll do is I'll most likely just make a separate video so it's not related to this project uh, since there's just a lot of it but before i end this video i would like to show you what other demos maps that are available here we have about eight to nine i believe eight eight different maps that you can test out so we have a wind speed demo wind direction transition uh steerable boat if you guys want to check this out real quick here's a steerable boat that you can set up as well there is more information on it on how to set it up uh, now of course this something like this is going to be set up in the game later so i am currently using a wasd keyboards to navigate this boat and it floats pretty cool uh, now if i press spacebar i can jump and then it automatic not automatically but <laughs> It actually jumps and it hit the ocean wave so it flipped over here we go that's pretty cool uh, now of course it's something like that it's not going to be in the game where the boat can jump i don't know why there is such a setting like that but it feels pretty funny actually if i mean if you make a game like this uh <laughs> you can probably just use this uh function for something else it's actually not that bad it um is jumping boat but yeah you know um what I was trying to say is that you will have boats available where you'll be able to uh, navigate them just using A um, to turn left and then D to turn right and then maybe S to even go backwards and reverse and then W to go forward. Uh, but again, it's going to be more of on the bigger ships where you'll have a captain navigating the ship or if you're on a smaller boat, well, you'll have to paddle. Uh, the boat will 
simply move forward as the animation performs of you um, paddling uh, with a paddle or something like that. So it's not going to be where you're just moving the actual boat. The character will have to move the boat. Uh, if it's a smaller boat, then of course it's a bigger boat. You'll have uh, dozens of individuals moving the boat. The other one is, I don't know, this mask water. Let's see what this is. Uh, it says to make uh, to mask out the water inside the boat. You need oh, okay. So this was the mask water that I just played. Uh, Alt art style. Not even sure what this is, but let's go ahead and play this. Let's just look at all of the options. Now this water looks a little bit different, unless it's just more calm water. I don't know what this um, question mark is actually even for, but. Here's a quick idea to what it would look like if you were to walk by a pond or something and you would have a floating object where water is not still but it still moves a little bit. Uh, doesn't uh, Didn't really read all of the levels. Here is a demo map. Uh, another demonstration and I think I've already played this one where you have all the different materials just floating uh, or different shapes with bigger waves of course. Pretty cool stuff. Now there's not much of a drag because these objects are feels like they're floating in the same spot and that's something like that you can also change in the settings I think it's under uh, it's, I'm not sure if it's underwater settings where it says you can probably change the wind direction for the angle to change uh, also I believe it's under the buoyancy I think that's under buoyancy if we go to simple boat and if we are to make this a little bit bigger under buoyancy right here where it says the drag drag multiplier intensity of horizontal drag force. So if you increase this, uh, let's say on a simple boat, let's just do a demonstration. Let's put it to 150 just for demonstration purposes. I want to see if this is what we'll do because it's going to be very important in the game um, for the objects to float forward. Oh my goodness, <laughs> did you guys see that? It just took off. Where did my boat go? Okay, it completely disappeared. Let's just do a quick demonstration. I think I'm going to even slow down the video for you guys to see this. Okay, you guys ready? One, two, three. Boom! <laughs> He's just stuck off. All right, let's uh, decrease this. I think this is too much. Uh, from 150, let's do 75. Uh, and then um, I'll have to remember this to slow down the video on it. That was just funny. Uh, let's go ahead and press play. It's probably gonna fly as fast as it can too. Here we go. All right, it completely uh, disappeared though. 75 is too much too. All right, now this is attempt number three. Go back to buoyancy, and this is something like you have to do, you know, in order to test out and know these numbers, because I personally don't know how those some of these objects are gonna react. Here we go, 35. Now the boat is still in the same spot. Uh, let's see how long it's gonna take. Here we go, our first wave. Uh, let's see, let's see if we're gonna get closer to these two objects. So far, nothing. It's very strange how at 75 it kind of disappeared, and at 35, half of that is still floating. Let's try number test four. Where is our buoyancy drag? Here we go. Let's do 50 and see if it uh, does any better effect. Here we go. Now it is completely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, this is not what we wanted to do, but it disappeared on us again. Here we go. They both went somewhere else. Yeah, it's not what I was trying to accomplish, but. Maybe we have to play with it just a little bit more to get a better understanding on how it's supposed to work. So let's do 40. It seems like it wants to move, but it's not really moving anywhere. Maybe because of the shape of it. I'm not sure. Uh, something like that. I'll have to look in a little bit later. But it's a good try and it's a good test. I'm definitely going to change this back to something smaller than that. Let's just leave it at 15 or 10. Uh, I thought it would move forward. Maybe uh, not even a floating factor is going to change how much of the object is submerged. But maybe we have a wind that is going to affect it. But we'll play with this later. But something like this, uh, worst case scenario, the object is just going to float in the same spot. Maybe we'll create uh, a movement path or, um, or something like that but that was just funny to see how it just flew to uh, I mean it just took off I mean again there's other um, levels that you can test out here is a speed uh, demo and I'm, I'm assuming it's more for 
checking all these different settings right here, water settings. And then if we play it, I mean, it's pretty much okay. So wind speed, 10 miles per second, fetch length. So it just kind of gives you an idea to what it would look like if you are to uh, change the settings for the actual wind speed demonstration purposes. And that could be found. So if you were to press on the water settings, uh, water settings self, and under default water sp uh, wind speed and fetch length 10 and 50, let's go ahead and change it to 25 and 1500 just to demonstrate. Uh, no, so it still says 10 and 50, so that hasn't even changed, didn't update it, uh, or, or did not update. But here is the wind direction level. And this one includes pretty much everything in it as well. Uh, wind direction, something that can be looked in in the blueprints as well. And I believe it's going to be the water height, not the speed. Uh, it could be the location as well. Let's see. Here we go under, no, that's not the world settings. Let's just press play and see what that does. I guess it just shows you some of the, okay, so it shows you the direction of the wind where it's going, that it's set up. And then, steerable boat, that's the one I just played. Sea state transitions. Uh, this is... I don't even know what this is yet, but let's look at it. So we have a more calm ocean. Nope, no, it's not. I'll have to read more about all of these levels so that I can explain to you guys what they all mean. Okay, so now I just remember that where it says getting started, we have different uh, levels. So right here that I've showed you demonstration of all of them, it says demo map is a scene from the video that you can click on is demonstrating the buoyancy for simple and complex objects. The alt art style is a scene from another video featuring a different water look with SSR, a quiet ocean and floating box. We have another one, the sea state transition demo is a scene from this video showing a seamless transition between different sea states. So this is right here I'll have to look more into making sure that the transition between the heavy ocean and the waves, the slower ocean waves that is set up and I'm going to copy these blueprints into my original level but this right here can be done later down the road and uh, not really in a rush for it um, just trying to get familiar with the whole project in general the next one is wind speed a demo is a scene from this video another video showing different sea state depending on the se selected wind speed and fetch length another one is wind direction transition in this map a wind direction transition is demonstrated Serable boat is a map that shows how to set up player control boat. The boat is controlled with the WSD keys. The space bar can be used to jump out of the water. The boat can interact with other objects that have similar or simulate physics enabled. Manual points. The map demonstrates the use of the buoyancy mode manual points that allows manually defining the points for buoyancy calculation. And then mass water. This map shows how to hide water inside a boat. So here's all the maps. You can go through them and figure out what you want to use for which purpose, play with them. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, so I'm going to wrap it stuff up because we have on the last part right here, it says network replication. I'm just going to read through this. I'm not even familiar with what this is yet, so I'm not even going to try to pretend like I know what this is. But it says the section provides a guideline how to implement network replication with physical water surface. The water material already comes with material parameter, time offset, which is needed for network replication of the water motion. Several uses for physical water surface have successfully used network replication in the project. Wave parameters are material parameters that are written to material parameter collection and are ready by the water material. Those parameters are constant unless a sea state transition is going on. So normally they are just written once, the, uh, once to the material parameter collection on being played. The state of water motion, world position offset of the water material, depends on the waves parameter and on the time. To be precise, on the time output of the time node in the Gressner wave comm material function for buoyancy, the Gressner equation are evaluated also in blueprint. Using the time for the get game time in seconds blueprint node, 
When the game is running, this note output the same time as a time material note, so water motion and buoyancy are synchronized. To replicate the water motion, we need to make sure that all clients use the same time value in the Gressner wave comma material function. To make this happen, the Gressner wave comma material function contains a material parameter time offset that default to zero which is added to the output of the time note. When the game starts, you need to calculate the offset between server time and client time and write the difference to the material parameter time offset. In the material parameter collection wave parameters, from time to time you should recalculate the time offset and update the time offset parameter to make sure that there is no time drift. So pretty much the way I'm understanding this is going to get used for online, like multiplayer gaming or something in that sort where all the players can see the water pretty much the same way as the other player does that's what i'm, what I'm getting at maybe i'm wrong but it says if you use buoyancy a good strategy is to calculate the motion of floating objects on the server this way it is ensured that the motion is identical on all clients here we go yes it's pretty much as it talks about and it's also compatible with orbit weather and seasons um, don't have that project personally, but it's available on Marketplace. It says, I've collaborated with the developers of Orbit Weather and Seasons to make this weather system and physical water surface compatible. With this compatibility, changing the cloud density will automatically also trigger a sea state transition if you use both systems together. For details information, see this separate wiki page. I mean, I can click on this project real quick, and it's Orbit Weather and Seasons. Oh, do I already have this? It says download. Hmm. Doesn't says buy. I'm very confused. I, I might have already bought this, actually. You know what? I actually do have this. Goodness. I actually do have this uh, project. It says orbit weather and seasons. A blueprint, a driven dynamic cloud power weather time of day and season system designed for maximum flexibility. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I bought this. I totally forgot. This is going to be used for setting up uh, different weather patterns things like that so that way it will save me time so we have different dynamics of uh, volumetrics clouds and things like that but this is going to be in different video i feel like i'm kind of going off the track here but yeah this is another project that is compatible so it's pretty cool i totally forgot i even have this so it's very nice to know that i can imp implement that and add it into the weather system like i've mentioned before you know the, the rain and things like that we'll have to make sure that the ocean changes it's going to be cool stuff and of course we have the blueprint documentations uh, I can read through this, or maybe I'll even make a separate video for this, so that way it's not too long. Uh, but yeah, it's simple stuff. We'll, I'll read through this in a separate video for you guys. But yeah, that's being said. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And before I end the video, I want to say thank you all for watching my videos. I'm My YouTube is growing by day. Thanks for the new subscriptions. Welcome, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I do apologize for uh, sneezing into your ear, but I figured I'll keep that in the video. I thought I was genuine and didn't really want to edit it out. So, that being said, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to click that bell button to be notified. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also leave a comment below. If you have any suggestions regarding this specific project or game in general or any other projects that you might be interested in being reviewed, that I personally have in my library, or if you have any questions regarding Unreal Engine in general, because I can always divert myself from the game development and look into some of the stuff and help you guys out as well. So thank you for all your support. Until next video, bye.